October 6, 2007. Stanford at USC. It's packed, and they've got everybody in the world there because they're going to beat us up pretty bad. We were 41-point underdogs. I mean, this was going to be the blowout of blowouts. Just one heck of a college football team. They were the big dogs in the Pac-10. Anybody that beat us in those days had a great win for their program. We're playing with a quarterback that was not a starter. They were the team to beat. Goes for the fade to the other side. Bradford, touchdown! Greatest upset ever. SC coming into that game had won 35 games in a row at home. Stanford has their hands full today because they are playing without their starting quarterback, T.C. Ostrander. They said, you know, T.C.'s not, he's not going to be cleared to play this week, so, I mean, you're going to be, you're going to be going, you're going to be up. And so I said, all right. Yeah, and a great opportunity for Tavita Pritchard. He gets his first start. And bad news, the most talented <laughs> defense is across from you in USC. Here comes Tavita Pritchard, who never started a game, had a lot of bravado, a lot of charisma, a lot of confidence, absolutely nothing to that point to back it up. But maybe was just naive enough in his own really great way to walk in there and, and pull off what happened. I don't think we, or anybody in the stadium, thought there was a... Uh, what is the snowball's chance of, uh, of of winning the game? We just hope we can make a game of it. Considering how big of an underdog Stanford was, maybe it was perfect that it was going to be Tavita's first start. How are we going to do this? You know, let's 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 get a plan in place. Let's let's. You know, I remember just watching tape. We went immediately and started watching tape on SC and, and you know stuff they were doing on defense. Tavita had been preparing um, for a long time for that game. He was the backup quarterback the week before, uh, and he was called on and. It was his opportunity, but it's something that uh, he had been preparing himself for for quite a while. Stanford was not, wasn't even in the same realm as SC in terms of how deep they were. When we studied the USC football team in 2007, predicted that there was 40 players on their roster that would eventually play in the National Football League. Pac-10 Media Day at the time, Harbaugh is up on the days and saying USC is the greatest team in the history of college football. and. Obviously, that was, you know, he did that on purpose. He was building him up, building him up. Any gamesmanship that can be played, Jim Harbaugh plays. He's a tough nut, a surly dude, and uh, he's the guy you love to hate. I just think he was just trying to call it like it was in hopes that that would throw us off to some degree. You go back and look at that team, I mean, there are some, some very good players that were on that team. I mean, some that, that weren't even on the you know, they weren't even starting on the team. There were players kind of in the, in waiting there. If you put that team together right now, they'd be a pretty decent NFL team. Whether it was a, a, it was a combination of cockiness and uh, under preparation and over preparation by Stanford, and they played great, and we didn't, and that's how upsets happen. And it happened that day. Touchdown, Stanford! My goodness! David Beeler set to kick it away. He'll be kicking against the wind. Kimball and Stewart back to receive for Stanford. Now, this is something they struggled with last week against Arizona State. And it's going to be the true freshman, Jeremy Stewart. He's going to wisely take an E, and Stanford will take over first and 10 from their own 20. Stanford's offense, kind of Jim Harbaugh's version of the West Coast, and his quarterback is in the hands, as we mentioned, of Pritchard. Last time he started a game, there were a couple of thousand in the stands, and it was in high school. But what has been impressive this week is the way he's handled the hoopla surrounding starting. Yeah, and that's the first thing that Harbaugh wants to see is how he, this young man responds when he knows he's going to start against really the best team in the country right now. He liked the bounce in his step. He liked his focus in the game plan. So we'll see what this young man can do today. to Kimball, tries the right side, maybe picks up a yard on the play. The skill position players for Stanford, they have tall physical receivers. Bradford's the best route runner. However, Evan Moore, he has to use that 6-7 frame to his advantage today. And the offensive line, much improved from last year. Their blocking last season was anemic. Better this year, Brewer and Matra are the only seniors. Marisek and Kimball now on the backfield behind Pritchard. They want to keep it simple for Pritchard, get him in some type of rhythm. Three-step drop, look in, intended for Evan Moore off his hands. USC defense, they don't give you much air, and it starts with the line. They're dubbed the Creatures, Jackson and Ellis, were both all Pac-10. 
Linebacker spot, as you mentioned, Brian Cushing still out, but the core still outstanding with Rivers, Malaluga, and Williams. Secondary a bit banged up at cornerback, but the safeties are strong with Mays and Ellison. Richard has only thrown two passes this year, three in his collegiate career. Scrambling, tripped up, goes down to the 16. That's an indication of this USC defense. Ray Malaluga with the stop. The junior out of Eureka, California. USC takes over, first and 10, their own 20 yard line. Running back was a strong point for this team. At one time, 10 running backs on the roster. They wanted two to come out of the pack. Injuries and a couple of other things have sort of whittled that number down. We'll see Washington, Reed, and McKnight probably today. Washington in now. He has the big skin. Cuts inside, picks up four before he's submarine by Nick Sanchez going underneath. The senior from Bell Glade, Florida. Been hampered by some injuries. Didn't get the start today. Sims did. Good look at Chauncey Washington. Third consecutive start. They call him the bruiser and the pounder. Yeah. If you think back to when USC ran the football well, they're doing a pretty good job this year. They didn't last year, but in 05, with Bush as the speed guy and White as the pounder, that's what the USC is trying to find right now. Who's the pounder? Who's our speed guy? Del Hazelton in motion. Booty looking left over the middle, wide open. Fred Davis, the tight end. A lot of running room. Needs one more block. Doesn't get it. Tripped up out of bounds. What a pass, catch, and run from Booty to Davis. 56 yards on the reception. Stanford likes to bring pressure, and they're doing it right here. A great outlet against the pressure look is to find the big tight end. You can see the crossing route. And then Davis, remember, Ron, Davis has wide receiver type oh, yeah. skills in that big body at 6'4, 250 pounds. He was a wide receiver in 2004. Prior to 05, never played with his hand on the ground. He, he outgrew the position. Yeah. But what a great weapon to have. And that gives the Trojans first and 10 on the 20 yard line. Booty again dropped at the two yard line. Pass intended for Patrick Turner. That's his second drop. Osaisai on the coverage. USC as big a favorite as it was had some issues because the previous week in, in in washington they had two offensive linemen hurt on the same play stefan johnson the tailback had hurt his foot so they had some issues of their own to deal with but i think most people thought you know especially when when stanford's quarterback was not going to be able to play um, that geez this is going to be a rollover we had gone one and eleven the year before these were the defending pac-10 champions and we we hadn't had a stellar season up to then and so i knew we weren't favorites to win the game we were at the coliseum where no one's won in a while but all the more reason to go in with nothing to lose and, and going with an attitude of hey man we're gonna go compete our butts off and and, and win this thing second down and 10 from the 20. washington Bowling his way down to about the 16, maybe 17 yard line. Pat Maynard making the stop, the junior from Jupiter, Florida, from that linebacker position. Well, Ron, uh, Stanford has early in games this year, they've held up well on the defensive side early in ball games, and they've been very good in the red zone yep. early in ball games. Even when they allowed the offense to drive the football, they've been successful at keeping them out of the end zone, but they've been worn down, worn down in the second half a lot of times. We saw Arizona State have to settle for a couple of field goals last week after big plays. Desmond Reed now to the right of Booty. Booty, the quick look in, incomplete. The third drop of the evening, David Osbury. Didn't look like it was a well-thrown pass, no. though, Kelly. No, I don't call that a drop. I call it a poor throw by, by Booty. It's a quick slant. It's way behind him, not even really on the back hip. And Osbury did a good job just to get a hand on it. But that's the timing that we're talking about, Ron, in the passing game. That has to get better, particularly between Booty and the guys outside. Well, David Beeler is going to be attempting a 34-yard field goal. Ironically, two of his uncles played at Stanford. Ball down, kick. And USC, the top team in the country, the first to draw a little blood. 3-0, Beeler with the field goal.
midway through the first quarter, things just uh, uh, weren't going well. Stanford wasn't doing well, but, but they were holding SC. Quarterback saying it's a catchable ball. They say it every time, my friends. <laughs> the end over the end kick. And they're just going to know they're going to pick it up at the 35 yard line. Hobbs still on his feet to the 40 down to the 39 yard line. Well, T.C. Ostrander is not playing, but he is cheering, and he's standing next to our Lewis Johnson now. Lewis. All right, Ron, thanks so much. Well, T.C., the first question, and most important, how are you feeling now? Uh, I mean, health-wise, I feel 100%. I should be coming back next week for practice. Uh, the, only, the only part that's hard is I can't be out there today. Hey, go back to Sunday. Any idea what happened with the seizure? Uh, well, the doctors have said that they think it was a combination of things. Uh, you know, a lot of a lack of sleep, uh, some, some different medication I was taking after the game that I hadn't taken before, and uh, uh, maybe getting dinged a couple times. Just kind of all came together to cause it. And we're watching your replacement, Pritchard, out there getting a big start in a big game. How have you been helping him all week? And we've been watching it today. They're talking to him. How are you helping him out? You know, tavita has got a good attitude, and he works real hard. There's not a whole lot I need to say to him to get him prepared. And, uh, you know, I think he's a pretty calm guy naturally. So he's coming here. He's relishing this opportunity. I'm just trying to help him out as much as I can. Coming into that week without Alan Smith, without Akam Udofia, without T.C. Ostrander, I mean, this was not a team like SC where you felt like you had NFL players at every position. Stanford was not that deep. So losing even two or three or four key players felt like, well, that's a deal breaker. I just remember running and, and having this guy behind me and being like, whoa, he's fast. And, you know, he shoved me out of bounds. And I was like, well, all right, this is what kind of day it's going to be. He's never started a game. This just cannot go well. But I think he was the type of kid who, first of all, he totally latched on to Jim's personality of competitive, we're not going to back down no matter what anybody else thinks. We do think we can go in there and win. And Tavita convinced himself. He actually believed that he could go in there and beat that USC team. And then I think part of it was pure naivete in a in a great way, a fortuitous way. He never started a game. He never had to face that USC pass rush. So good for him. He didn't have any expectations going in. Coach Harbaugh had us in a great place coming into the game, and we fed off of that. In a couple of great games today, one upset already. Pritchard keeps it, looking for blocks from his wide receivers, and he gets them, and he takes Uncle Jack's lesson and does it. He slides, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Make up of 10 on the play. You see, Ron, how Jim Harbaugh, that game plan, is taking advantage of what Pritchard brings to the table that Ostrander really doesn't. Get the quarterback outside the pocket one way, an additional way to pressure this USC defense. Do not adjust your screens. That's the score. The number one team leading Stanford by a field goal. Well, back to action. USC keeping it on the ground up to the 40-yard line, running the football. You know, when we were talking to offensive coordinator Steve Tart Sarkeesian, we were talking about taking over the entire coordinator's job last year sharing it with Lane Kiffin now you got to remember both guys worked under Norm Chow Kiffin of course doing an outstanding job of the Oakland Raiders well, you asked him about what type of play caller he is Kelly yeah and he's still I think sorting that out but he doesn't think a whole lot has changed his players know what to expect but I think he's trying to find a way to utilize his weapons and I think that's one of the stumbling blocks that we see with this offense right now there's the pass and catch for a first down to Patrick Turner. Nick Sanchez on the coverage. You know, Ron, I think as an offensive coordinator, you have to decide how you're going to attack a defense from week to week. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can have almost an indecisiveness because you have so many weapons. You can't get them all into the game plan every week. So what do we do about it? A stable of running backs, but we have to find two or three that can get done what we want and then find out one or two go-to guys in the passing game. Well, he wants a lot at his disposal, and he has it with this talent. Here's Chauncey Washington, left side. Big gain on first down, picking up about eight. Coming up from that strong safety spot, Austin Yancey, his first stop of the afternoon. If we, we can always go back to the 05 model, because offensively, you won't see probably a more efficient offense, at least very often, than that offense from USC. They had 
Bush that could do a lot of different things in pressure defenses, and then White was the pounder, but they also had different types of receivers that did different things. Booty hasn't really settled into that thus far in this season. Second down, we'll call it three. Stanford brings five. Washington, short of the first down, it'll bring up a third down and about one. We've got a dynamite game going on in the Coliseum in Los Angeles. We are in quarter number two. USC, the number one team in the country, trying to avoid what so many have already felt this year. That's the upset. Pete Carroll, the winningest active Division I coach, seeing his offense struggle a little bit. Second down, a third down, and two. USC yet to convert on third down today. And they're going to get stopped. No, second effort, third effort, first down, and then some by Stanley Havili. So Havili broke his fibula last year. Little play action pass. Booty looking for Turner. Has him. Pass caught inside the 10 to the 5, reaching for the pylon. Touchdown, Trojans. I think they're going to call him out at about the one and a half yard line. At least the line judge seems to be marking it there. Well, one official put the hands up, but you're right. The line judge is saying, no, he's out at the one and a half. The Turner's going to come all the way across the formation in what they call an over route. He makes a great catch, which he hasn't been consistently doing. And then it's just athleticism, the size and speed to try to take it all the way into the end zone. But the most important thing, he finished the play wrong. He hasn't done that consistently in number seven. Pickup of 31 on the play. The longest pass play for USC this year is 35. Now they mark it at about the two yard line, just inside the two. The officials doing a good job working together. Washington. In the eye, he has it. Lowers the head, driving the feet. He'll be short of the goal line. Eggbo and Maynard coming up to make the stop. From the one. Washington. Touchdown, USC. Washington's fifth rushing touchdown of the season. You've got to be careful with these Trojans. Three times this year, they've had 20 unanswered points, and Egbo gets a hand on the extra point. It is no good. USC was up 3-0. They score a touchdown to go up 10-0, and, and Stanford blocks the extra point. They had this kid, Pinnell Egbo, he was good at that. It was like a skill. He had these freakishly long arms, and he just stuck a big paw up there, knocked down the extra point. You know, the people in the Coliseum groaned a little bit, but, oh, instead of 42-3, to three, it's going to be 41-3. to three. Oh, too bad. If we keep playing like this, we, we could maybe uh, make a game out of this. This is an important defensive series for Stanford. If you have any hope of an upset, they come on the blitz. Booty reads it and overthrows his receiver. Intended for Fred Davis. <laughs> They want the rock of granite mentality on the offensive line. Booty, the far out, complete to Havili. He'll be stopped short of the first down by about two yards. Pickup of eight on the play. With the motion and formation, yeah. they create a situation where one receiver ran the corner sims deep, and the next receiver just set in the flat and gave Booty a very, very defined target to throw at. Washington. Depending on where they mark it, I don't think he got the first down. Chris Horn doing a nice job, the senior out of Dayton, Wyoming. One thing Stanford was aware of is letting John David Booty control the tempo. They haven't done it. A little student body right action. The first down, they've got it. Close to the 40-yard line, Chauncey Washington. They'll mark it at about the 41, maybe. He's got the first down. McKnight now on the backfield. And here is the freshman to the outside. Tripped up at the last second. Davis and Thompson, two tight end situation. McKnight alone in the backfield. Booty to Turner. 
Tries to get away from the defender to no avail. May have picked up three on the play. But Ron, it's, it's plays just like that. Mm -hmm. Turner gets a ball out in the flat, and he tries to make a big play. They don't need a big play. They need a first down. That's how offenses move the ball mm -hmm. and score points. That's exactly what Steve Sarkeesian was talking about, the offensive coordinator. We don't need superhuman effort. We just need you guys to do what you're told and do the right thing consistently well. Third down and four. Hazelton now goes wide to the left. Davis the tight end also on the left side. Osbury in motion. This is Ronald Johnson the true freshman. First down and a couple dancing around inside the 30 down to the 27 yard line. Ronald Johnson the freshman from Muskegon Michigan. Fresh set of downs inside of 145. Davis goes wide to the right. Booty looks left. Pumps. Throws. Complete. Inside the 10 down to the 9 yard line. Vidal Hazelton. The kid from Staten Island, New York, picked up 18. They fake to Washington. Booty keeps it. Complete down to the seven yard line. Stanley Havili. Knocked out of bounds by Austin Yancey. 111 to play in the first half. Good change of pace. The fake pitch. Had a receiver in the flat, but the receiver running along the back of the end zone right there, 48, Brad Walker, was wide open if Booty just would have gone through his progression. You have the guy in the flat, and you know that. But take a peek at the guy coming in the end zone. He's not there. Go to the flat. Maybe a little bit impatient. Good call on that. Hazelton dancing on the right side. Washington, Havili, eye formation. Here's Johnson, Washington. Hit right at the line of scrimmage by Pat Maynard. That's his fifth tackle already this afternoon. Well, Ron, you know what USC needs? They need Reggie Bush type <laughs> yeah. talent to show up. And Joe McKnight is that guy. Now, I, I know that's a, the, a lofty comparison. Mm -hmm. But what my point is, this is where Reggie Bush comes into the game and absolutely pressures the defense in multiple ways. And in 05, they had that. They haven't had it since. Joe McKnight, even though he's a freshman, needs to have a more integral part in this offense. Well, USC is going to call the timeout. They want to talk about it. Here's a good look at Joe McKnight right there out of River Ridge, Louisiana. Third down and goal from the six. Washington lowers the head close to the goal line. He's going to be short. Clinton Snyder, the linebacker, is the one that really put the first hit on along with Bo McNally, who's got five stops today. Based on the play call right there by Sarkeesian, it probably was predetermined that we would let the clock run down and then probably go for it mm -hmm. on fourth down. Now they're going to call another timeout with 11 seconds left. It'll be fourth down at about the one-yard line. Now for USC, Davis, Thompson, and McCoy. Fourth down and goal from the one. And the officials come running in. And Stanford timeout. calls the timeout. Stanford, that's their first charge timeout. I think they just felt like it doesn't really matter what we do. We know we're better than Stanford is, and we're going to pound the ball here, and we're going to score. We're not kicking any field goal. Well, that's not what we do against a team we're 42-point favorites against. We're going to get it into the end zone. Fourth and goal from the one. 13 seconds left in the half. Washington, nothing doing. Stanford's going to stop him. What a great effort by the defensive line of Stanford. And Stanford stopped him and made a goal line stand at the end of the half. And it was still 9-0 SC, but Stanford was the team that sprinted off the field, high-fiving to the locker room. And then all of a sudden, they felt like, hey, we, we, we can stand up to these guys. It was, a, it was a literal stand, but it was a figurative stand as well. We can do this. They can't push us around like they think they can. Another big momentum swing for our team. I think it was a, a huge confidence builder for our team, uh, you know, that they they could do it. Jim Harbaugh telling us last week the kids showed toughness when they could have packed it in. This time it's Bo McNally with the first hit from that free safety spot. 
He says our kids never give up. And that's the first thing is consistent effort, and then we can build on that. But look at the penetration right there. There are white hats reestablishing the line of scrimmage, and then obviously Stanford. Jim Harbaugh and the rest of his staff and the rest of his players know that that was a very important play if they have any chance of doing something mm -hmm. special on the afternoon. Talking to Scott Schaefer, the defensive coordinator. He's proud of these kids, the way they've picked up this new system. Richard now, with five seconds left, just tries to get out of the shadow of the end zone, and that's the way the first half's going to end. Jim Harbaugh's squad have only, has only given up a touchdown and a field goal to the number one team in the country, and he is pumped about that. Going in 9-0, all we were saying was, hey, we're in this game. Our, our defense is, is playing a heck of a game because that was, you know, I mean, that was one of the, one of the better offenses in the country, um, you know, coming at them. And they held them to nine points when we weren't doing it. I don't know if we crossed midfield. Uh, you know, the biggest thing is we hadn't turned the ball over, so we weren't hurting ourselves. In the first half, he didn't show much, but the defense came through, and actually we held uh, USC, I think, to uh, to nine points, and, and we stuffed them at the goal line, which uh, uh, nobody had done. And I think that gave that team the entire 20-minute halftime period to get in that locker room together and tell each other, and actually maybe for the first time have everybody on the roster believe it. We can do this. We can find a way to win this game. I think USC's fan base was so accustomed to seeing USC win, especially at home, that there wasn't a real sense of dread, you know, coming out of halftime. Up 9 nothing. again, a second-half team, typically, they probably would get it straightened out. Halftime, I think we're down 9-0. And so I go, you know, all right, I'll stay a little bit longer, maybe. And then we get in the third quarter, and it's still a close game. And I'm going, oh my god, this thing could actually happen. Two-time first-team Pac-10 Academic All-American. USC back on offense, run game going nowhere. And you can see Taylor Mays coming off the field. Seems to be in pain. That would be a huge loss. Welcome to Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles, California. Along with Kelly Stoffer and Lewis Johnson, I'm Ron Thulin. Number one team in the country leading Stanford 9-0. Check that. It looked like Nick Sanchez was coming off the field. Not sure if that's a stinger. Second down and 12. Booty goes back, throws it underneath the coverage to Fred Davis, the tight end. He has been the main receiver today. Pickup of nine on the play for Davis. Right. Booty's done a nice job of finding him. That's when Stanford doesn't get pressure, and that's why it's very, very important for this Stanford defense to get consistent pressure on John David Booty. As we mentioned, Pac-10 school record, 35 straight wins at home, 24 in conference play. Herschel Dennis now checks into the backfield. Booty's pass picked off. Could be golden goal post for Yancey. Touchdown, Stanford. We talked about just going out and get, getting back to business. Well, unfortunately, the very I think it was the first play of the half count was an interception for a touchdown. The defense is the very much the hero of that game. I mean, they they played their putts off and and scored points. The interception by Austin Yancey was a huge play in the game. Uh, we were down nine at the time. That interception return for a touchdown uh, made it a two-point game. When that pick six happened, I think there was a, there was a change in the electricity in that crowd. All of a sudden, it was, you know what? There's a real threat here. He was able to track the ball out of the quarterback's hands, uh, was where he was supposed to be, and then then executed, uh, made the interception, and, and took it down the sideline for the touchdown. Huge play in the game. It's pretty exciting for a, for a team that you know uh, was was down by, and the papers were going to be losing losing by at least 40 points. Ron, when you allow an underdog to stick around, experience a little bit of confidence, these type of things start to happen because they, they understand that they can make a play or two and be right back in this game. Right. Booty was coming late to the to the fullback, Havili, that time, and it was very, very a very poor decision. You should have gone elsewhere and throw the ball away. You see about a 32-yard return. Extra point is good. 
The college football world, will it be shocked again? The number one team in the country holding on to a two-point advantage over Stanford. The shadows have covered the field here at USC. This is going to be a short kick. Running up is Johnson. 15-yard line straight ahead. Up over the 30 to the 35-yard line. That's where they'll mark him out. Herschel Dennis back in the backfield. He'll get his first carry of the evening. Breaks to the outside. Gets over the 40 to the 42-yard line. Yancey, four stops on the night to go along with that interception. And the fact that Dennis, number 34, is in the game, I think, is important as well because Dennis is one of those seniors that hasn't played a lot. He's been banged up. We've got Turner one-on-one -on -one with Osai side top of the screen. Moody goes underneath, passes caught by Davis, upended, ball is loose. They're saying it's an incomplete pass. Nick Sanchez has been very active. Tim Sims got the start at that quarterback position, but Sanchez has done a lot of work today. Five tackles on the evening. And Tim Sims was very active when he was mm -hmm. in there. Had a couple of very nice plays and run support, and Sanchez has done the, done the same thing, and that's where they have to find Fred Davis dragging underneath, and in that case, he's the outlet receiver on the boot. You have to check that big tight end. Davis now with three receptions. That one incomplete, third down and five. 11 minutes to play in the third. Stanford jumping around on defense. Moody straight drop. Has some time over the middle. Pass caught at the 50. Inside the 45. Fumble! And I think Stanford's got it. It may be Sanchez, and it is. Davis caught it, could not hang on. And Pete Carroll, the frustration continues. Stanford started to be physically more assertive as the second half wore on. And whether it was SC just mentally had prepared for about a half game and wasn't expecting it or whatever it was, maybe the Stanford kids just were a little tougher than we expected. No turnovers in the first half for USC. Two here already in quarter number three. And now Stanford takes over first and ten from the 42-yard line. Kimball. Right side picking up a couple on the play. Thomas Williams coming up from that strong side linebacker spot. Here comes the rush. Pritchard tries to get away, slips one tackle. Pass incomplete. Corey Harris on the coverage. More wide to the right. Bradford on the near side. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. Pritchard hit, dropped. Back at the 36-yard line, Cedric Ellis, his third sack of the evening. This is a guy that was voted the best defensive lineman in the Pac-10 by Pac-10 offensive lineman. He's a defensive tackle inside, and that's just unfair to have a defensive yeah. tackle rushing, and Jim Dre, the tight end, has to come in, up inside and try to block a 6'2", 305-pound rusher. Not a fair matchup. Out of edge is going to be going to be iced down after this one. Nothing doing. Great coverage. It has been maybe a case of focus. Drop balls and a fumble and interception here in quarter number three. Back to the ground game. A successful ground game. Herschel Dennis exploding over that left side crosses the 30-yard line to the 31 and a half. First run more than 10 yards of the evening for USC. And Dennis, that experienced senior that comes in, doesn't bring the same explosiveness that a McKnight does or even a Chauncey Washington, but the dependability factor goes way up, and that's what USC needs right here. That was his longest run of the year. And they go back to the ground game. This time banging in the left side, picking up about three on the play. Ron, what USC likes to do up front, they run the zone running scheme. Mm -hmm. Inside zone, outside zone. And basically, it means that you start with double teams on the line of scrimmage, and the running back has to be patient and has to recognize where the aiming point is. I think the best one in this lineup, this stable of running backs, Sarkeesian said, is Herschel Dennis. Yeah, Joe McKnight, the rich freshman, hasn't learned that power. That true freshman hasn't learned that patience yet. Moody rolling out this time, buying some time. Into the flat, pass. Waiting for
for the officials are saying it is complete. Up to the 43 yard line. Hazelton on the reception. Osaisai on the coverage. Moving Booty out of the pocket just a little bit so he could see things clearly. And then Hazelton to come back along the sidelines. And that's where you see that strong arm. Yeah. I don't know that that ball was secure in the end. We'll see if this one is stopped to be reviewed further. It doesn't look like it. No, it doesn't. USC's on the line to get a playoff. And they do. Back to Herschel Dennis. Let's go back and see if we can see the feet of Vidal, Haz Vidal Hazelton. And it's not just the feet, which obviously one foot has to be in, but it's securing the ball as he goes to the ground. And yeah, that's a catch. Yeah. That's a nice call by the officials. They had it exactly right on the field. This young man from New York is uh, showing a great deal of promise, and they said he is only going to get better, and they want him to do it quickly. Second and seven. Chauncey washes it back into the lineup. Stanford brings a bundle. Booty reads it. Pass complete. Another first down. USC. Patrick Turner again. Well, when Stanford brings pressure, it means man to man, and Turner has to win right now on Nick Sanchez. Just running the in route, create a little separation, and expect your quarterback to hit you with the football, and then Turner has to finish the play. You know what's interesting, Ron? The stable receivers, it seems like they can make the difficult catches, but they lose focus on the easy catches, and they have to get better at the easier aspects of this game. Good block by Chelsea Washington, by the way, on that. With a play action. Booty looking across the middle, going to be dropped back at the 50-yard line. That's something you don't see. Sam Baker, the big left tackle, not being able to control his man. Second down and 18. Stanford already with more sacks this year than they had all of last season. Here comes the pressure again. They try to set up that little slip screen, but Clinton Snyder there. And we have a penalty flag thrown. And I think that's going to be on. It looks like it'll be on Clinton Snyder. No, I think. I th yeah, I think you're right. And the late hit. Yeah. Absolutely, Stanford had the right play called. It was a screen to the side that Snyder came from. He came absolutely crystal clean and hit just a little bit late on Booty. There is no foul on the play. The play was legal by rule. There was a receiver in the area. John David was a real warrior, and uh, you know, there was no keeping him out of the game. The SC quarterback was a real star, but he'd hurt his finger. I don't think that we ever knew the exact moment while the game was going on of when that happened. But I think a lot of us who were there knew something was not right with it. They knew they had talent all over the field. And for whatever reason, whether they just believe deep down, there's no way, no matter who we have out there, there's no way we can lose this game. Whatever it was, they should have taken him out of the game. He was not fit to play. And it wasn't, you know, I, I feel bad for him. It wasn't his fault. But the four interceptions was the whole key to the game for Stanford. Third down and 18. Osbury, the redshirt freshman, wide to the left. Two wide receivers near side. Stanford shows blitz, but they only bring four. Booty has time. The deep pass. Picked off again by Nick Sanchez this time. Booty's second interception of the evening, and the Boo Birds are out of the Coliseum. I don't think I was sitting there necessarily thinking, geez, they're going to take him out, but I was wondering why they were they kept throwing the ball, you know, why they maybe didn't go to a different tact. And, and, and you know, Pete Carroll, in retrospect, I'm sure will be able to explain that. Johnny was a really good football player. I made a, a horrendous mistake in that game. It was really a bad situation. He, he hurt himself in the first half, you know, and and, uh, and I, I asked him if he was okay to play in the second half and like a football player and a great competitor does as he was. Uh, yeah, I'm fine, you know. Just unfortunate that he was banged up in the game and I played him longer than I should have. One more example of the receiver and the quarterback absolutely being on the opposite game. The question now becomes, can Richard grow up fast enough to yeah. take advantage of this enormous opportunity. No offensive points for Stanford. It came on an interception, run back for a touchdown. Inside of six and a half to play. Sanchez. Oh, we've got Benelli. We got a little uh, goofing around, a little chippy down there. The wide receiver from Stanford. Dead ball. Personal foul. Number four in the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, so it looks like Bradford uh, got away or was just the innocent bystander. Yeah, it's, it's generally the last guy that 
that throws the punch. Lower left portion of your screen here. Watch it. There it is right there. Good job by Bradford not retaliating. Oh, Kevin yeah, Ellison. you saw the oh, hand. Right, right at yeah. the end. 15 yards that the Stanford offense desperately needs against this USC defense. That's one of the longer games of the evening. Pritchard going deep down the middle for Bradford. It's going to be picked off inside the 20 down at the 18 yard line. Taylor Mays with his first pick of the year. And Pritchard just getting a little impatient. Taylor Mays is the free safety play in center field. Bradford is running a go route kind of right down the seam. Your go routes have to come up early so the ball can get out there enough. And Pritchard knows it. First and 10, USC. Herschel Dennis. Getting a lot of work here in quarter number three. Second down and eight. For the Trojans, Dennis hops over one blocker up to the 23 yard line. Pick up a three on the play. Quentin Snyder, five tackles on the evening. Inside of five minutes left in the third. Stanford shows blitz. Booty just floats it out to the flat to Desmond Reed. He's got the first down. It'll be close, but I think they're marking it just a shade past the first down marker. Well, this is one of the ways to regulate the blitz, throw over top of it. Normally, Reed would be in picking up that blitzer, but a change up by USC, free release the running back and drop it over the top. Nice job by Udofia on the blitz from that left defensive end spot, but it's a first down for the Trojans. Can the Trojans be efficient enough to move the ball consistently enough play after play to get points? That's the question mark that still overrides this offensive team. Washington looking for some running room. Tries to split the gap. Nothing doing. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Redshirt freshman Nick Macaluso. Middletown, New Jersey. Redshirt freshman coming up with a stop. He's had seven tackles today. And second and ten. Here comes the blitz again. They drop the screen off. Washington. Egbo coming up underneath to make the stop. They'll be short of the first down by about two yards. At third down and two. Washington alone in the backfield. Little bunch formation for USC. Avili back at the fullback spot. Booty play action again. The deep out caught. Davis has some running room. Inside the 30, still on his feet. Touchdown, USC. Fred Davis was a very excellent tight end. And um, when he made that uh, touchdown catch, it was, you got the feeling that, okay, here we go. Now the Fred Davis touchdown was tough for Stanford to overcome and it was two things it was the momentum was back on their side I think they finally probably could take a deep breath and go away man this was getting a little nerve-wracking now we're we're gonna be fine it was also Fred Davis was just a man-child I mean he looked like how, how could anybody even tackle him he was so physically superior to everybody out there what an incredible talent he was and to watch him weave his way through the defense and tacklers are bouncing off. That was the invincible USC that we all had sort of expected that day. The longest pass play of the year for this USC offense. And the bunch formation to the right, but Fred Davis, 83, is to the left. On the play action, the defense loses Fred Davis, and it results in a big play and a timely big play if you're USC. 63 yards. The previous long was 35. The extra point by Beeler, who had one blocked already tonight, is good. Look at it again. Fred Davis, who has done yeoman's work this evening. And he's running a corner route from the left side of that formation. There was a bunch of receivers, three receivers to the right side. The play action pass. And the focus on the bunch receivers, the big tight end gets lost, and then the missed tackle right there. Remember, we're not talking about a wide receiver. Yeah. If you're going to tackle 6'4", 250, you got to bring some plastic. 
Not David Booty's reaction. It's almost like finally. Yeah. Do you get the sense, though, that last series by USC following the interception, they increased the tempo a little bit? I think the sense of urgency goes up. When the sense of urgency goes up, typically your focus goes up. And that's what this USC offense needs to bring out on the field every play, every game. Well, they've got 379 yards total offense, and right now, Stanford, they're struggling. Only 62 yards total offense. Now, let's see if Stanford could do anything offensively. They have not been able to budge this USC defense. Stewart takes it on one hop, puts the head down, tries to get to the 25. He'll be stopped short of that mark. Stanford minus yardage here in quarter number three. Pritchard, look out, makes a nifty move. Still on his feet. Rifles the pass. Oh, my. Could have been picked off and should have been picked off. Intended for Sherman. Taylor Mays is the one that got the hand on it. Well, we talked about decision-making when the play breaks down. That was a bad decision by a young, inexperienced quarterback. You can see three for 15. He hasn't done much on the day statistically, but tip, typically he's made decent decisions. That was not one of them. Richard, little quarterback draw. Defense closing quickly as he nears the 29-yard line. I think that ball came out. I, I don't know did. if the well, line what judge is marking down. Yeah, the line judge is marking it down. But when you consistently get behind and down in distance, mm -hmm. you're asking for trouble against That's this right. Pete Carroll defense. I'll tell you that right now. Third down and six. Jeremy Stewart. Goes in motion. SC brings five. Pritchard reads it past the more complete. And it'll be just over the first down line. Nice catch by Evan Moore, the big 6-7 wide receiver. Let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Hey, guys, just think back to Stanford's stop on fourth and one right before the half. They come back out. They get that turnover for a touchdown. They get another turnover in their favor. And the bench area down here, the underdog, Stanford, then had that new life. They believed that uh -huh. it was their game. That's what they were talking about. This is our game to take it. But that last turnover that they gave up was a backbreaker. Now they're trying to get it back. But these are those moments that Harbaugh is trying to get that culture change going here with this team. They try the ground game with Stewart, the true freshman, bouncing off some tackles, and he'll get close to another first down. The freshman out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Richard straight back, takes a hit as he lets the pass go. It's complete at the 40-yard line. Bradford with an outstanding reception. But you got to give a little tip of the cap to Mr. Pritchard. He had USC right in his face. You're absolutely right. The pass had to go over Kerry Harris and under the safety Kevin Ellison coming off the hash. I cannot describe to you how difficult that is because Harris was continuing to get depth. So you have to get it over defender, but yet drive it enough to get it there. That's good enough for another first down. First and 10 just over the 40 yard line. Kimball. Takes it down to about the 37-yard line. And second and about nine. You've crossed the 50-yard line. The red flag goes up for a quarterback saying the defense typically gets hotter down here. More pressure. They can ex he can expect pressure as he gets closer in. And here they come. Richard goes back. Hit as he lets it fly. Looking for Bradford. Caught inside the five-yard line. My goodness. Richard takes a hit again, and Bradford comes up with a spectacular catch of 36 yards. Well, the quarterback is willing to take hits, as you can see right there. If your receiver on the other end is going to go up for you and make a play, and Bradford does that, you want to play quarterback? You have to do that in order for the ball to be caught at the other end. Get up, young man, and go back to the huddle and call another play. Get it into the end zone. Terrell Thomas beaten on this play. They call him the lockdown corner, and now Stanford knocking on the door. Kimball leans forward, may have gotten just short of the goal line. I tell you, Pritchard, you got to you got to take your hat off. He's taken a couple of whacks upside of the head today, and this young man has stood tall to the challenge as we end quarter number three. Pritchard really caught on. I mean, you could really see where he was taking control. Kimball 
Right side tries to go over the top. Touchdown, Stanford. That was uh, another big momentum swing for our team. I think it was a, a huge confidence builder for our team, uh, you know, that they, they could do it. They could drive the ball uh, on this team and, and convert for the touchdown. Well, this is just an attitude play. Jim Harbaugh says, if we want it enough, I'll teach you how to win. This is how you do it. I formation Kimball behind Marisette, the freshman fullback. Let's go hit somebody in the mouth, get it in the end zone, and wake people up here in the Coliseum. The extra point is good. Now we're, it's a real game. It's, uh, you know, it's 14 to 16, and, and we've shown that we could score uh, on the best team in the country. The most advantageous position to win is through hard work and preparation. We believed in that, and uh, that's how we went about our business. Jim Harbaugh looks up. He believed that they were going to compete tonight. He's been exactly right. 16-14 is our score. USC by two. This young man is a perfectionist, too. Short. Desmond Reed breaks the first line. We have about four flags thrown on that play. Block below the waist. Number eight on the return. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Fifth penalty against USC. Worst field position for USC. Booty flushed out of the pocket into the flat incomplete. 16 to 14 the score. 14-43 to play in the ball game. Osbury, the redshirt freshman, wide to the right. Three wide receivers set. Stanford showing blitz again. Hazleton in motion. On the ground. Chauncey Washington goes over the 25-yard line of the 26. First down, USC. Ron, you talked about Stanford coming with pressure, and that pressure took them out of their run lanes. Watch the cutback right there. Washington does a nice job of reading the backside, and sometimes you can blitz against runs, but you have to be disciplined and stay in kind of gap protection. Stanford's defense didn't do it on that play. Well, they like to pressure, but it's a first down for USC. Keeping it on the ground. They're showing some success going over that right side. McNally with his eighth stop at Washington. Right now, USC is acting like they want to do it right here. This is the way to do it. Just keep banging away, and they keep going to their right side, the left side of that Stanford defensive line. Again, Chauncey Washington. Ron, what Stanford has to do is they have to commit as many as needed to the line of scrimmage. Eight, nine guys, and force USC to make plays outside. Keep an eye on Davis the tight end and forced Booty to do something with his wide receivers, Hazleton or Turner. Well, they've got third and short now. They'll go with three wide receivers to the left. Booty, the quick out to Turner. Has some running room, flips for the first down. Sanchez undercuts him, but it's another USC first down. Well, third and short, and USC can basically do anything they want. Turner is outside running kind of a, a bubble screen. You can see the block outside, but Nick Sanchez does a great job of getting cut, getting to his feet, and still cutting Turner to the ground. This may be a battle of attrition for Stanford because they have had problems in the second half being outscored by a lot. They've been hanging tough so far. Can they continue the last 12-54? Straight ahead running again with Washington. Gets up to the 50. That'll set up a second and short again. Second and about two. Well, keep an eye on Stanford's defensive front. What's beginning to happen in USC's zone running scheme is it's starting to open up to the back side. Stanford was doing a nice job early in the game up until this point, really, of being disciplined all across the front. They're getting blown past on the mm -hmm. backside, and the running backs are finding that lane. That's second and short. The stop the Stanford defense stacks him up right at the 50-yard line. Chelsea Washington again. 
other scorers will keep you posted on what's going on in college football tonight. Macaluso on the stop, by the way, the redshirt freshman nearing double digit tackles. No gain on the play. The last time on third and one, USC spread it out and threw the quick one to Turner. We'll see if they do the same thing here because there were other opportunities on that formation, third down and one, a few plays ago. Time to try the right side again. Washington's second effort gets him the first down. Nice job dancing around trying to find the open. There were not as many moments as we'd been used to seeing with the Trojans, but there were still several moments in that game where you saw their athletic superiority, and that Johnson touchdown was one of them. Fresh set of downs, though, for the Trojans. Closing in on 11 minutes to play in the ballgame. Pass this time. Booty going right down the middle. Wow. Pass to the freshman Johnson. Touchdown, USC. <laughs> Ronald Johnson's first career touchdown. 47 yards from John David Booty. The running game sets the table for big plays, and that's what we're seeing out of USC. They've ran the ball successfully on this drive. Play action pass go directly over the top for the big one. The Stanford defense been susceptible to big plays. But this time, John David Booty atones for two interceptions. He hits Ronald Johnson for 47 yards, and USC's lead is back to nine. Stewart back. This will be Stewart. Straight up the middle to the outside. Gets close to the 30, and that's where he's going to go down. Was it a touchdown by Ronald Johnson or not? Well, let's take a look at the whole play again. Successful zone running play, and then they play action pass over the top to Ronald Johnson. But right at the very end, where is the ball? When he gets tackled, we'll see on this look. Keep an eye, it's not where his helmet or anything else is, where's the ball? That ball's not in. That ball's not in. The reason it's significant is that remember how the first half ended. Stanford held on a on a fourth down and very short. Now this will be a substitution penalty. Substitution infraction on the offense. 12 men on the field prior over three seconds. The five yard penalty, still first down. You know, we take that play, whether it was a touchdown or not, and the, the replay officials had the same angles we just saw, and I, I believe there was evidence to show that that ball didn't go in. It's a replayable play. Here is Richard Sherman. This is a young man they wanted more out of. Has a 70-yard reception already this year. Two 100-yard games in 2007. They call him their top option, but he has been kind of quiet tonight. Yeah, and if he's your top option, you have to get him the ball on place just like that. If the defense is taking your top option away, you have to, as an offensive team, create ways to get it to your playmakers. Well, we picked up a couple. Second down and eight. Kimball gets up to the 35-yard line. Third down and five. Keith Rivers with only his second stop of the of the evening. You know, we, go ahead. No. We saw Stanford answer last time after a big play, and that was important. And so now this third and about five yards, they need to answer once again. Can this young quarterback, Tavita Pritchard, orchestrate another drive to get in the end zone? Only four of 12 this evening. Bradford and more wide to the left. Four wide receivers out for Stanford. Kimball empties the backfield. USC rushes just three. Still putting pressure on Pritchard. Throws across his body to Bradford. Caught over the 50, down to the 48-yard line. Third incredible catch for Bradford tonight. Mark Bradford was a beloved figure on that Stanford team. His dad had passed away earlier in the week, and he flew straight to L.A. Had to deal with the funeral because, you know, his, now he was he was the only person left, you know, to take care of his family and everything. And he hadn't practiced very much that week. 
So he was able to just, you know, kept his starting job. Obviously, they weren't going to just sit him down. He got in there, and he, he played his behind off. Uh, he made a couple big catches. He made a lot of good grabs to get us in scoring position. He was a kid who came out of a tough part of L.A. to come to Stanford, where nobody in his high school had ever done that, essentially, and sort of taken a big leap of faith at a time when the Stanford program was in good shape, but Mark was such a high-profile player, he could have gone just about anywhere. And here's this young man who's taking care of his younger brother and sister and is doing it all on his own, he's, and he's playing football, and he's carrying a, a pretty decent academic load. And now uh, uh, he's on center stage at home uh, before his hometown fans, and, uh, and he gets the opportunity to really excel. Just over a week ago, his father, Mark Sr., passed away, played with a heavy heart last week. And he is having an outstanding game tonight, and his dad is probably smiling down on him. Stewart, right side, has a hole. Over the 40, close to the 35-yard line for the true freshman. Gary Harris making the stop. Here's a young man that averaged almost eight yards a carry last year in high school. And watch who's out in front of, of Stewart. It's Marinelli, number 63. The offensive line, but it's also number four, Bradford. Bradford's a complete player. We've seen that he can catch the football, but in the college game today, receivers have to be willing to block, and Bradford did an outstanding job on that play. Looking for Bradford left side. Now Pritchard's got to run. Gets over the line of scrimmage. Scampers out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Pickup of about six on the play. That'll bring up second and about four. Good job, though, and good recognition. And try, instead of trying to force something, he was locked down to Bradford and look. He saw he wasn't open. He just took off. Yeah, and I talked to you about that before the game. With the young quarterback, he can generally run the offense when the look is clean for him. But where he needs to make good decisions is when the play breaks down and then what goes through his mind. Stewart on second and four. Nothing doing right side. Let's try the left side. Kyle Moore on the stop. It'll be short of the first down, but it'll bring up third and short. You know, we'll the call it two. The freshman, Jeremy Stewart, has yeah. come into the game and given the Stanford offense a nice boost. Anthony Kimball is really the staple, has most of the carries this year, but Stewart has been a nice change of pace. Four carries, 23 yards for Stewart. Kimball's got 15 carries for 30 yards. Now Bradford wide to the left on third and short. Stewart alone in the backfield. And I think we're going to have a timeout call. Nope. I think they got too it. much time. I think they got it called before. Yeah. It appears to me. That's I thought. I saw him calling timeout. Wasn't sure they're going to get it in. Well, there isn't a flag on the play. Timeout. Either. Stanford. Yeah. That's their first charge timeout. Still have a nine-point advantage at 23-14, but USC moving the football. Third down and two. This is the seventh play of this drive for the Cardinal. The freshman banging forward. The official looks like he'll move it or mark it short. Rivers stacking him up. And it appears they'll be about a half a yard short. Stewart did everything he possibly could, but that's an immovable force there, that USC defense. Well, Jim Harbaugh has a decision to make. Yeah. A field goal moves you up to within a touchdown, and that's exactly what he's going to do. You can't lose your mind as a head coach, even though you're playing the number one team in the nation tough. You still have to do the things you would normally do, which means get the field goal and get within one score. Belts will have a 45-yarder. He's only one of four from this distance this year. One of five for his career. Ball's down, penalty flag. Hold on. It may be offside against USC. If it is, that'll be a first down. The kick was wide left. Didn't make any difference. Yeah, it's going to be against the Trojans. Wow. You talk about a penalty that Pete Carroll will absolutely go off on is that type of penalty. Offsides on the defense, number 28. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. High formation with Kimball. Dot in the eye. 
Penalty flags thrown again as Kimball gets down to the 20. Another offside call probably against USC. And I believe, yes, yeah, Cedric Ellis, number 49, is going to be offsides. And Cedric is a quick, fast defensive tackle. And those defensive tackles get used to reading the snap count and trying to gain an advantage by jumping. Offsides on the defense, number 75, five-yard penalty. Brains first down. 16 penalties last week, seven penalties this evening. And it was actually the other defensive tackle, yeah. Moyala, that time, the other side. Those guys are reading the snap count and trying to get, gain an advantage, get a jump, which is exactly what the defensive line likes to do late in the game when they get in a rhythm of hearing that snap count. They are last in the Pac-10 in penalties, USC, 117th in the country. On first down, Pritchard's got the first down, bed ladder to tight end. Leans forward down the 11 yard line, Rivers holding on for dear life. Great ball handling by the young quarterback, Davida Pritchard, had the USC defense fooled. Stick it in, pull it out. The cameraman was a little fooled a little bit as well, but number 45, Ladner goes to the flat. First down and 10. Kimball down to the 10 yard line. Pick up of one on the play. Clock inside of 625 to play. You know, you just get the feeling, Ron, that down here, Jim Harbaugh calling the plays can use Pritchard's athleticism. Mm -hmm. You know, just like he did on the play action pass, the boot, he could do it again in situations like this. As the field condenses, it's as wide as it is, but it's no longer as long as it is out in the middle of the field. Did they throw the fade to Evan Moore? No. The quick look in, incomplete. Pass intended for Jim Dre, the tight end. You'd think that when you have a guy like Evan Moore at six foot seven going up against what appeared to be one of the corners that gave away about six or seven inches, you'd want to go to him. Yeah, the big tight end coming in on the angle route, acting like he's going outside, rolling back inside is number 83, Jim Dre. You just got to come up with that ball. Yeah. You're a tight end, you know you catch the ball over the middle, it means traffic. You have to catch the ball in traffic as a tight end. Drive was kept alive by an offsides call against USC. Third down, nine to go. They need to get to the one yard line for a first. They try the right side. This defense, you're not going to stretch them out too far. I remember feeling close. I remember feeling like, like we were down there and we didn't score, and I was like, dang it. Ellison just closes quickly on Kimball. Decision time again, and this time they're going to go for the field goal again. And I remember just getting stalled and just being like, oh, we were so close. And being like, after that, being like, oh, can't wait to go back out because we got to score the next one. 26-yard attempt for Derek Belts, the senior from San Diego, California, out of Vezio, the holder. And he splits the uprights. The number one team in the country now clinging to just a six-point lead over the Stanford Cardinal. 5.43 to play. Ten points scored here in quarter number four by Stanford. That is why we are at 23-17. And this is going to be a penalty. This goes out of bounds. We can't count on the defense forever. And Booty and company need to prove that they can get it done in this situation. And Booty talked to us about that yesterday. He talked about the difference with him is he's been in tight spots now. He's had to run two minutes when it counted. Well, this counts, and he needs to execute. The receiving team has elected to take the ball at the 35-yard line. First down. We saw that drive covered 61 yards for Stanford. They only had 74 yards at halftime. But now it, the onus is on the defense of Stanford. They have given up 464 yards in this football game. But Pete Carroll's squad, courtesy of big plays, they haven't really capitalized on a lot of those yards. Yeah, look for USC to want to run the football again and force Stanford to come up and bait them into committing guys to the line of scrimmage and try to go over top for a big play once again. And the Stanford defense stacking up the run. Clinton Snyder, he has been in a lot of tackles tonight. All around the action. Six tackles this evening. Clock goes inside of 5.30 to play. And he goes in motion. Looking for Turner. Has Turner. 
still on his feet, takes a hit as he crosses the 40 up to the 42 yard line. A pickup of seven on the play. And Ron, that, that motion that Turner was in right there is a very nice and well designed play because if it's man to man, Turner continues to go across the field. If it's zone, he sets down in that void with that big body and Booty finds him and gets into a third and very manageable situation. Turner with eight receptions this evening. Came in with 16 on the year. We've got a timeout. And USC will call it, and Pete Carroll will run down and give a talk to his quarterback. They fake the pitch. Booty looking for Turner's got him in the flat. Got the first down as he crosses the 45. They'll mark him out at the 46. Nick Sanchez coming up to make the stop. Once again, Turner in motion. Turner just keeps moving. And the fake boot to one way, and then here comes Turner back across the formation to the flat. Nick Sanchez, number two, did not do a very good job of reading that route. He had help deep. Yet Austin Yancey was deep and had the deep receiver. Sanchez has to get quicker out of his zone and go blow that play up. Nine receptions for Turner tonight. Inside a four and a half to play. Stanford showing blitz. Here they come. Booty hit. Still on his feet. Looking. Now he's got a scramble. They're going to pull him back down at the 37 yard line. Clinton Snyder, the motor man again. He's the guy that came up with the first hit. And the pressure without bringing extra guys. And I think it might be Snyder that ends yeah. up making the second hit as well. You talk, when Jim Harbaugh sells this program, he talks about consistent effort. Stanford football was obviously at a very low point when Jim took over. And I think Stanford was looking for somebody to do exactly what Harbaugh did, and that is inject some life into the program. It was just a different energy. He came, he came like a, you know, guns a blazing, just, you know, high energy, high enthusiasm. It was something you, you had never seen because my first college coach is your first college experience, so he just brought a whole new experience for the seniors and everybody, and just, we had a team full of guys who bought into what he was, what he was preaching, and, you know, the, the rest is history, say so. So I think, for Stanford fans, even though everybody thought, well, this guy's nuts, this guy's crazy, I think they loved it, though, because they were just tired of getting beat down. Well, that epitomizes it right there. You get pressure early, and the quarterback bounces off. You get your hind end off the field, and you go make a play mm -hmm. that your team desperately needs. Outstanding by that young man, Snyder. That brings up a second in the bundle. Motion right side, Booty looks for that little slip screen. They got it, but Stanford covers it up well. Desmond Reed had the reception, but he went absolutely nowhere quickly. They got everybody up on the line. They back off and rush five. Here's the pressure on Booty. Pass. Incomplete, intercepted at the 38-yard line by Osaisai. Knocked down at the 45-yard line. The third interception by John David Booty tonight. When you give an underdog a chance, and then they start getting momentum, and they start believing in themselves, then it's adrenaline. Then it's the team that's supposed to be winning, tightening up. And Turner was open in that void in the middle of the field, and John David Booty just airmailed it. Good, did a nice job of picking it up up front. Booty does the right thing by moving up in the pocket, but that subtle movement with that edge pressure that Booty had to avoid when the quarterback speed is moving, particularly forward, if you're not disciplined, you tend to throw it high, and Booty did on that play. Two minutes and 50 seconds to go. They are on the 45-yard line of USC, trailing by six. Pritchard looking deep, still looking deep. Going for the home run ball, and it's going to be incomplete intended for Richard Sherman in the end zone. Taylor Mays was step for step. Pritchard can crack a little smile. Yeah, because Pritchard knows he got away with one, quite frankly. Radford to the near side, more to the far side. On second and ten, USC rushes three, and they flush him. Pritchard rifles the pass. That should be pass interference, and there's the flag. 
Sherman got hit before the ball got to him by Kevin Ellison. Well, Ron, you were all over it, and you're exactly right. This will be the eighth penalty on the Trojans tonight. Pass interference on the defense, number four. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. When a quarterback can move around, he makes plays in a lot of different ways. The defense, and you can see right there, it was he arrived early. You can see it from the side probably was the best angle. But remember, the defense is seeing the quarterback come out of the pocket. They have to, they're in no man's land. They have to decide whether they become run defenders on the quarterback or still defend the pass. 30-yard line. USC's defense just tries to corral Jeremy Stewart. He was lucky to get past the line of scrimmage and then a couple. I wasn't so sure he was looking to throw that, that football. That is exactly right. I think it was the drive where we call the halfback pass, and I still give Jeremy Stewart grief to this day. It was a halfback pass. I pitched it to him, and it was a smart play. He was supposed to throw it back to me. He didn't. Um, <laughs> And which is which is a good decision because the guy hung back on me. That's like a quarterback making the right decision. There was nothing there, and he did the right thing by pulling it down and not throwing it up for grabs. Everybody on their feet at the Coliseum. Jeremy Stewart came off under his own power, second and six for the Cardinals. Here comes the blitz. Pritchard steps up, gets away with from it. Has some running room close to the first down. Do they mark it? Yes, he's got it inside the 20 with two minutes and seven seconds left. How about the young quarterback making a play? Running with the football as a quarterback generally makes, represents the right decision. Nothing downfield. And Pritchard tucks the ball. And that's an aspect of the game that TCO Strander really doesn't have. And we've seen it out of Pritchard time and time again today. I just remember being in the moment and just saying, all right, it's two minutes. What are, you know, what are my bullet points? You know, get the first first down. Uh, you know, scramble, you know, scramble around. If it's not there, throw it away. We obviously thought we had a chance to win at that point because we're only down by six. We're in scoring position. It, it, could, it could become a game. A little pump fake throws Kyle Moore for just a second. First and 10 from the 19. Trojans rush three. Pritchard throws pass incomplete. Terrell Thomas covering Bradford. Evan Moore going one on one with Terry Harris, the quarterback. Moore's got seven inches on him. Richard looking. Penalty flag is thrown. He tucks it. Goes out of bounds at the 15-yard line. The way that penalty flag was thrown, it's going to probably go against Stanford, and it will. Yeah. Holding, and it's going to be oh, second and extremely long. Jim Harbaugh is going to have to loosen it up a little bit and see if his young quarterback can hook up for it. A big play, and remember, Mark Bradford has shown a propensity to go up and make a play on the ball in the air. Holding, 63 on the offense, 10-yard penalty, remains second down. He obviously did not agree with how late that play came out. Just because it comes out late doesn't mean it wasn't warranted. Second down and 20 with 155. Look out from the left side. Pritchard gets hit as he throws. Pass is incomplete, intended for Evan Moore. Ellison was the closest defender, but again, Pritchard taking a knock. Third down and 20. They bring the house. Pritchard steps up, throws, looking for more. Is it a completion? No, stepped out of bounds. We just tried for three plays and couldn't get even a yard. It wasn't a great drive until that point. I had missed some throws. We got, we got a couple dumb penalties. They went to the guy with the biggest height. Oh, he, he's out of bounds. There it is. Yeah. His left foot is out of bounds. And he came so back now in. he can't be the guy that touches the ball. The player that was first to contact the ball went out of bounds prior to touching the ball. The penalty is a loss of down. Before the fourth and 20 play, um, you know, we were trying to get the play into Tavita. I just remember being across the field and him yelling something to me. And I don't remember being able to hear it. Not successfully, we would have liked them as a coaching staff. I knew there could only be a couple of things. So I went back to the huddle, and I was like, okay, here's what we're going to do. Comes back, 
Like, guys, I, I couldn't hear him. <laughs> I don't got to play, but we're going to run double go. So I'm sitting there like, man, we don't even got to play? Davida eventually put it together uh, with the, uh, the information that he had and, and was able to call the play. It was essentially backyard football. I was like, OK, you guys all go deep. I, I remember keeping in an extra blocker for the play because, you know, I was just going to make sure I could get this thing off. Well, this is it, ladies and gentlemen, fourth down and 20. Crowd's loud, can't hear anything. I'm running my route, I get around Terrell Thomas. Sherm goes down the middle. Uh, it's split safety, but he, I mean, he's the safety's hanging on Sherm pretty, pretty tight. Richard steps up. Look back, and the ball's, ball's already out. And I feel it coming, I feel it coming. Throws over the middle, pass is caught right at the first down line. Sherman on the reception. And as soon as I squeeze the ball, I feel a helmet right in my rib cage. And I'm, you know, able to get this ball in there just enough for Sherman to make an incredible catch on it and, and put his body in front of it and hang on. He has hit hard on it, and it's still close to the first down marker. So we're all like, did he make it? Did he make it? I look up, and I'm kind of over the first down marker, and I'm like, wait, we might have just got this. One official has it inside the 10, and that will be a first down. Yes, if they go with this near line, line judge on this side, it's going to be a first down. Yeah. The officials came running in from both sides. What a catch, though, by Richard Sherman. The play in, in, in itself was a, was a great throwing catch. We were right on it. We knocked the, the, the crud out of him, and he, and he held on to it, made a very great, made a very good play. Tavita made a uh, uh, pinpoint pass to Richard Sherman and just inches over the uh, yard to gain marker. And they're saying it is a first down. That was the significant play that gave him a chance. We had him. We had him sacked and back and all that, and then and they got off the hook. One of those great, great plays uh, that eventually, uh, you know, won us the game. So it'll be first and goal for Stanford, one minute and 39 seconds away from upsetting the number one team in the country. Wow. like that where the young quarterback can grow up and it's going to be reviewed further it appears yeah, right here I think it is and this is something that is under the guidelines of the review booth to review this USC spot. is challenging the ruling on the field regarding the spot yeah and the thing that's going to be hard to dispute is you know the angles and it's not where he lands it's where he catches the ball. The ball in his forward pro progression right there the forward progress. Well, he's clearly inside yeah. the 10, down to the 9-yard line. Yeah, that looked like it was down closer to the 9. I think it's a good call. And, and the main thing is there is an indisputable video evidence to reverse anything. This is going to be tough. I think the officials okay. were right on it. And remember, there the officials is. have the perfect view. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First oh down. Oh, my. 139. To play Jim Harbaugh in Stanford. Less than 10 yards away from Pater for the tie. The extra point would give them the lead. Knew we had a new set of downs and and uh, went about calling the, the next play. There was never a sense of like, oh, it's the fourth quarter. Oh, you know, oh, there's 85,000 people here. Oh, this is the number one team in the country. Oh, we can drive down and beat them. All I'm thinking is, we got to make this drive down. We got to go score. First and goal from the nine. Richard keeps it. Great ball fake. Makes his way down to the five. And with two timeouts left, the running game for Stanford is still in play as we near a minute 20 left in this game. So everything is on the table. They don't have to throw the ball right here. The last team to beat USC here was Stanford. 35 wins later, Stanford's trying to do it again to him. Second and goal from the five. Pritchard looks into the end zone. Pass, no, out of the end zone. They went to Evan Moore trying to use his height again. Moore wide to the left. Bradford to the right. Looking for more on the fade. Throw it up for grabs. Knocked away at the last second by Terrell Thomas. Outstanding defensive play. We put Mark Bradford, me, and Evan Moore. We were trying to fit it in the hole. But they kept their three best defenders over there for three plays. Terrell Thomas gave an impassioned speech prior to the Stanford game last year. You saw him on the 
sideline, urging his teammates on. But it comes down to this one play. Fourth and goal from the five for Stanford. And the overload is to this side down below. Look for a pitcher to roll this way. USC is going to burn their last That's time right. out. Sherman, Whalen, and Moore, and now we've got a penalty flag. Wow. Oh, my. I, I don't understand this. Substitution infraction on the offense, 12 men on the field. Wow. Five yard penalty, main fourth down. Well, just a miscommunication, and Jim Dre, the tight end 83, is the one coming off. Mark Bradford was a beloved figure on that Stanford team. And when his dad died, and everybody on that team knew how important his dad was to him, and everybody on that team knew how proud his dad was for what Mark had done, made it from where he came from, made it to Stanford, done his family proud. That was such a hard moment for that team to absorb just a few weeks prior to that game. He hadn't even been around part of the week. Uh, which is understandable. It was sort of a, a story to put perspective on the game itself. It was a healing thing for Mark. Mark is like, man, I'm going to switch to the other side. Because Ryan Whalen, a walk-on, was on the other side. We don't even look on the other side. We're just trying to fit it in the hole. So we're like, all right, you know, why not? Stay. <laughs> Guy, this hasn't been working. So he switches to the other side. Fourth and goal from the 10. Richard, straight drop, goes to the fade on the other side. Bradford, touchdown, USC! As I just remember, you know, looking out, and we had some room, and, and Mark was over there with, with one guy. He said, all right, let's, let's take a shot at it. You know, let your, let your players make plays. I threw it and, and didn't know what happened. I think that was kind of the, the sense in the whole stadium, was like I threw it, and you were kind of waiting for the signal. Touchdown, USC! Mark was going to come down with that ball. I mean, he was, he was pretty set on it, so it was the rest is history, as they say. Maybe it had to go to Mark Bradford. You know, maybe that last one, based on everything that had happened, just had to go to Mark. Both of them executed it. That uh, Mark, uh, you know, clearly in bounds, clearly, uh, you know, just a great play on his part. It was kind of chilly, man. The, the quietness from the stadium kind of told it all. Stanford touchdown, Stanford, my goodness. Jim Harbaugh, if you're asking, is going to go for the tie right here. He's holding up. Obviously, they're tied right now. He's going to go for the extra point. After Bradford's catch, the place was just stunned. You know, I mean, people had, they just weren't accustomed to seeing this. This was the Coliseum. The guys were running out on the field. The game isn't over. We have 49 seconds with this thing tied up. They're reviewing the play on the field. I got so excited, I got the teams messed up. Well, remember the catches that Bradford has had early in the game. He is a great catcher of the football, and not every wide receiver is. Oh, that is a absolutely a catch. Yeah. Now, the thing is, he created some maroon by pushing, pushing off at the end, but that's not reviewable. That's just part of it, and I like the fact that the officials let the players on the field decide the game, and that's a great example of it because that could have been called pushing off Bradford against number nine, McCurtis. But we have an extra point to kick for Hunt. It's 23-all. The rolling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Richard, straight drop, goes to the fade to the other side. Bradford, touchdown, USC! Stanford, touchdown, Stanford, my goodness! I think most of us still said, you know, there's still, you know, uh, almost a minute left, and a lot of bad things could happen. Quickly turned to knowing that we had to make the extra point to go ahead. We still had to kick off, and we still had to defend uh, a last drive by USC. What a great pressure throw, though. He also yeah. rushed a couple of times for 11 yards. Yeah, two for six doesn't sound great. This is it. But it was when the two came, and they came in extremely difficult situations. Adebegio will hold. Belts for the extra point. He has not missed this year or for his career. Stanford has taken the lead. With 49 seconds left, USC is out of timeouts. The people in the stands have not moved. There's 90,000 people there, and they are stunned, frozen stunned, mouths agape. 
standing there like they cannot believe what they've just witnessed. You don't want to kick this ball out of bounds like happened no. last time, and I'm not so sure you want to kick it deep and give USC speed a chance at a huge play. Belch is going to drill this one. This will be about three yards deep. USC is going to bring, bring it out. Johnson takes a big wallop. Penalty flag is thrown. Well, you can add 15 onto this because it's going to be a face mask with the, the 15 yard variety, but great field position nonetheless. I think the official just threw somebody out on the sideline. Did you hear him say, get out? Just get out of our little meeting right. here, I think. At least we hope that no one got kicked out at this late stage. Well, you're right, it is the face mask. Only four seconds. Went off the clock. Well, this was the head jerking variety right here. And just to stand for player number personal 45. foul on the defense during the return. Yard penalty. First down. John David Booty, 45 seconds left. No timeouts for USC. Reed alone in the backfield. Pressure. Booty's going to be dropped. Inside the 35 to the 34 yard line again. Clinton Snyder and Egbo combined for the sack. No timeout, so Booty has to try to kill this to try to get the third down and preserve the clock. Four sacks for this Stanford defense. USC had only allowed three coming into this game. Egbo and Number 20, Clinton Snyder says, let's go meet at the quarterback and make history right here. And that's exactly what they do. This will be the biggest upset in college football this year. Hazleton wide to the right. 27 seconds left. They rush four. Pressure's on. Booty looks for Turner off his hands incomplete. How about that? September 29, 2001, the last time the Trojans lost at home, and it was to the same Stanford Cardinal team. 35 home wins later, by the way. Yep. Turner to the near side, 23 seconds left. Fourth down and 16. They only rush three. Booty's got time. Hit as he throws, and it's going to be picked off. This one's in the books. Bo McNally just takes a knee at the 48-yard line. Stanford is going to upset the number one team in the country. I think the final, you know, moments were almost like a haze for most people, even if they were hoping something was going to happen. Four interceptions for John David Booty tonight, matching what he has done the whole year. Career-high interceptions. And Stanford, all they've got to do is take a knee, and this is going to be the biggest upset in college football in 2007. One thing I remember him saying to me was, make sure you keep the ball. And so that, if there was one thing I was thinking when I was going out after we got, you know, everyone organized was, all right, I got to keep the ball. Wait, we just beat them. They were the number one team, you know, team that couldn't be beat. They, they had a team full of draft pick. That win was a uh, great foundation for the Stanford football program. The players, the fellows, the coaches, uh, you know, everybody knew that that wasn't going to be a vehicle that we could just ride. I recognize what a great accomplishment it was for them, and, and they deserve the credit for it. I have uh, the picture in my office of Mark making that catch, brought that with us from Stanford to uh, here at the 49ers. I'm reminded daily of that, of that play in that game. It was very special for, uh, for Mark Bradford, for our, all of our players, uh, all of our coaches, that was a uh, was one of those moments, you know, that uh, that you have, and you look back and say that was not only significant uh, thing that happened in our lives, but uh, a signature uh, event. If you look back over the you know the course of history in college football, you'd have to say it, it, it's one of the greatest upsets in history. To be that big of an underdog, to have a quarterback who had never started, uh, playing a team that was dominant, had won so many games at home, um, it was an incredible story. The mighty Trojans of USC have fallen. <laughs>